starting with our kicks. If you haven't, we're going to start kicks. Boom, up and over. That's what a pressing kick looks like. We're doing only the inside pressing kicks because those are the only ones that exist in this form. Southern leg, which is like two seconds short once you learn the whole thing. It's just tiring. So this is not a very long form, but it is very physically demanding, right? So it takes a lot of core strength. So it's important that in your other basic training, anytime you have an opportunity to lift your knees or pump your knees, anytime we're jumping, you want to make sure you're bringing those knees up as high as you can because that strengthens the core and that makes all of what we're about to do a whole lot easier. So let's get started. If you haven't done your crescent kicks, you still have to do your crescent kicks. So either you do them now or you do them after we end class, but you should practice your crescent kicks regardless. Stand tall. Yes, sir. So we're going to run like the forearm and our left foot forward, which is how we start. And then when we do our tiger claws, do a regular tiger claw with your, face, uh, your wrist pulled back. And then point them down. So keep, keep them closed, but then point them down. It's kind of like if you picked up a bowling ball with one hand and you're trying to use all your forearm strength. Or you're like holding two siblings away from each other. Wow, it's got that. By their forehead. So here, and when you trade, the right foot's forward. Now we're going to lift the right foot, and we're going to turn to my right, and turn to the right. One, two. Now that, from here to here, is 90 degrees. I'm sure they're teaching y'all geometry already. Like third grade. I don't geometry. Ah, I didn't learn until high school. <laughs> so from here, that's 90 degrees. This is to help you with the kick. So we're going to knee out. We're going to roll the knee out. Right? So this is what I just did. I just rolled my knee out. If you notice, it's a crescent. right? So it follows the same track that this foot's going to follow. So up and over with the knee, and then up and over with the foot. Right? I'm doing it towards you so you can see. So we start here. We trade. I'm going to lift and turn 90 degrees. And then when I lift and roll out, and I kick, boom. 90, 90 more degrees. That's 180. I was facing you, and now I'm facing the front. So I'm going to turn 90 degrees again. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. I'm going to go out with the knee, rolling out, right up and over in the crescent motion, and then up with the foot. And I'm turning back towards you again. So that's 180 and 180 in reverse. Okay, let's try again. Yes, sir. So left foot forward. I'm going to turn half circle. That's 180. We're going to lift our foot and turn a quarter circle. Knee out and crescent kick, turning a quarter circle. Turn back a quarter circle. Knee out and crescent. Quarter circle. Okay. Again. Yes, sir. Ah, but before we do it again, pick you up. Before we do it again, well, you don't have to get you up. Before we do it again, remember I gave you an assignment. If you haven't done it, it's important. You should, right? It'll really help with what we're doing. If you have a dog or a cat, you probably do this all the time anyway. Especially a dog or a cat that's always up under your feet. Like you're walking in the kitchen and they're just right in between your legs. You're like, whoa, whoa, back, this back. So the same way you up, 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 is what I'm trying to get you to do now. So lift your foot. Pretend there's a cat or the dog. They're all up in your space. Oh, you got to jump over. Don't land on the kitty. Up and over. Oh, Just trying to grab it. Take it. Or your kid left Legos on the floor. And you're barefoot. You step on that one Lego, right? Whoa. Yeah, because that's how hard, that's how much that hurts. Don't leave Legos on the floor. So if you've done that, right, you did ha, then now we're just going to add the kick. So I'm going to do it stationary so that you can see what I'm doing. If I lift my knee, and I roll out, right, so all we did was the same thing we were just doing. We just extended this leg and added a kick. So we're jumping over, and back the other way. Not too hard, right? So off of one, you're going to jump onto the other, and crescent. Other side, press. 
Now we're just going to add the turn. Turn to the left. Right foot forward. Lift and turn. And we're going to hop over. Oh, and turn. Now we're going to go back. One more time. Yes, sir. Turn. a black sash, or a brown sash, or a red sash going to brown, or red black, or brown black, or any of those, the very, very advanced color sashes, you want to make sure that those hops, you minimize the hops, right? So if I'm here, and I turn, and I go here, your goal is to only, if you have to, only hop once to get your body set up correctly to kick and turn all the way around 180 degrees without these. Those help. They call them mini hops and they help align your body correctly so that you can learn the form and understand which ways we're turning. But essentially they disappear because you don't have time to do all of that hopping to get to the next motion. Okay? So you're simulating instructor and everyone at home